Hello, I'm Steph from iDriver Classic and every year for Drive It Day I like to do a special video and in the video I like to do something different with the cars to celebrate not only ownership but actually using and enjoying classics as they should be used. And so I didn't really know what I was going to do for this year, I was racking my brains and anyway, a real chance meeting with at least from Venture Bound at the NEC restoration show in March led to something a little bit different and Elise said to me Steph I'm doing a really cool route out in crew and you can come and use my app and see how it is and essentially it's a massive adventure road trip planned on the app and you get to follow the app all the way around instead of doing more traditional paper route and you get loads of different things to see on the way but best of all there's a bit of a competition involved so you've got questions to answer and all the rest of it so knowing what I'm like with my propensity for spotting classic cars hidden on driveways I'm quite confident that we could place in the top three on this one but we're joined by my trusty steed Nancy we've also got a cracking lunch which has been provided by the team and there is a vegetarian option in there for me and we are ready to go reached the end of the first quest on the Quest Drive app and it took me by surprise what kind of questions we had, didn't it? Yeah. Um, I think that we both felt the pressure, especially when we saw some of the timers pop up, but I think the biggest thing that we both agreed was, was that as we were driving along, and by the way, I'm going to flip the camera actually and show you some of the amazing footage that we've shot as we've driven along because the countryside around here is just glorious and the questions were so simple yet made you realize that perhaps when you drive you just don't pay as much attention as you think you do which is slightly terrifying so it was things like when you last passed a speed reminder sign what speed was it what was the last warning sign you saw and you thought oh, what was it and there were other questions and I think our favourite question so far has been, um, and I don't, I don't want to give too much away because if you're going to do the route as well, is the one where it said there's an animal in the tree or the last tree that you passed was an animal, what was it? It was something like that anyway. And it was this incredible owl and I was like, oh that is so clever. And it's just all these questions and I was talking to Elise who created the app and I said, how do you get it right? As in, you know, some of these questions are quite uh, environment sensitive. So it's things that may be there for a limited time only and may not be there all the time. For example, there's a gate painted in this color. What color is it? And she said that she goes out and she'll spend two, three months planning a route and then she plans it and then she goes back out a couple of weeks before, checks it and then they also have something called the 24 hour car and what the 24 hour car does is that then goes out and checks it 24 hours before for uh, anything that might have happened, so fallen trees, roadworks, things that could impede the road ahead and in fact it actually happened on our journey and that's why we're doing a few more A-roads today than perhaps the original route would have had because unfortunately there's been quite horrendous flooding around here so the original route had a lot of flooding across which meant that at the last minute, the 11th hour, Lisa's is out there replanning the route, looking at what it is and for me it's just been a real high quality route, what would you say? Yeah, I'd say it was very, um, very well thought out and she's clearly got a passion for for driving herself, I think that's obviously where it all sprouted from, wasn't it? Yeah, and I think that's the thing, is that I've been a lot of routes that corporates have done, whereas Elise's background is in rallying, in racing, so she just gets it, and I think that's the thing that comes across when you go to something that someone who's an enthusiast for what they're doing, it just comes across completely. And a big thing for me on this trip, actually, has been the fact that as we've been driving, I've realised, and I've been a bit kind of down recently in terms of, it's just been a bit like, oh, we need a holiday abroad, the weather's been so rubbish. But as we drive along and we go at a much slower pace because we are doing these quests and we're looking for stuff, it's made me appreciate again, just how beautiful England can be and the scenery and 
that's one of the things that the app doesn't intend to do but does do it gives you a deeper appreciation for the countryside for the beauty that's around us because quite often we're in such a rush that i think we just totally miss a lot of what's going on now what we're going to do is we're going to crack on with this little route that we're on and what happens is basically between your quests and i think we've got eight quests today is you um you have like these little driving segments so that essentially takes you to the next bit and what we're finding it really difficult to film during the quests because... Um, quite intensive, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite intense. And, you know, when you've got all these questions and stuff, I've got time to set the camera so I can show you the scenery, but I don't have time to be chatting while we're doing it because we're barking orders at each other. Like, we're like, right, what about this? What about that? Did you see that? Did you see this? And so it's really good fun and it's high pressure, but it is not the environment to be filming a reaction. I just wish that a few more of our friends were on this trip because I know that if there were a few more of us, there'd be absolute calamity. Then come on, let's push on with this bit and we'll get on to the next quest and tell you how we get on. Now look, confession time, we have got lost already. In fact, we got lost, I think, what was it, first 30 minutes? No, no, five minutes, I think we got lost. We used, <laughs> the, the good thing about the app is it's got a little feature that has like a real-time map on it, similar to Google Maps, I suppose. Um, so if you do get lost, you can, you can sort of go through the app, go into the map, and that shows the route that you're taking. Um, and yeah. then we can see exactly where our car was, so so we knew from that point on, we're just slightly off the route, let's head back. So. Yeah, it was quite good like that actually, because um, we, did, we did get lost and we realised really quickly because if you go off the route and you've got your sound turned on, it pings to basically say, you're wrong, and then you think, oh, okay, yeah, I need to turn round. And it's really easy to get back on route. Now, when we did the Morris Minor Owner Club um, tour to France last year, we were all there. I mean, look, my friendship group were all nuts at the best of times. And we were following this paper map and we just got lost after about seven instructions. And we just said, right, you know what, we're just going to start following everyone else. Which worked really well until we realised that everyone else was lost as well. And so that's the great thing about the app is, A, you're not reliant on, you know, all the paper and trying to follow all of that. Because whilst I do prefer in many ways a paper map, the thing is, is once you're lost and it's saying, you know, 30 yards turn this way, and two miles turn that way, that's great. But once you're lost, you are lost. And it's really hard to go back and unpick it and work out where you've gone wrong. Whereas on this, you could work it out relatively quickly and get back onto the route. And you knew because of the instructions it was giving you in terms of turn left here, turn right there, you knew you were back on the right track. So really for me, it ticks a lot of boxes and I think as well is that you know they, t they talk about the app being sustainable but as well it means that it's just a little bit more permanent because you can go back revisit bids and as you can see it's a relatively straightforward set of instructions it's not overly complicated because there's that feature isn't there on Google Maps where you can have it like an earth feature and when people put that on I'm just so lost I like the simplicity that's why I drive old stuff as well because I like my driving experience to be simple and it is simple to follow along on that app and it, actually I was talking to Fred and I said what would be really nice is that a lot of older people enjoy their classic cars and they're always looking for something to do with grandchildren and younger family members it'd be really nice wouldn't it to take yeah, out absolutely. kids that love being on their smartphones and say yeah no do you know what actually we can bring out your smartphone we can make it all part of the experience and it encourages more young people to get into classics and that's what i really like about it but i also really like i think the thing i like most about it is the fact that 
you don't have to be in the fastest car because there's so many things that I've just never even bothered looking at because you have to be in the fastest car and I know that I'll never even get close to it so I think just why bother whereas this because you're doing it on your own time it just feels so accessible and um, I've put all the details by the way because if you want to do the same experience as us where you come out you do the all day uh, and we're out for about four or five hours they do do shorter routes as well and I think the routes start from 30, was it about 35 quid? Yeah, I think about 35 pounds. So I just buy the little route and then you yeah. in the code um, and then you download that to your app um, and then you're away so you don't, you don't need to be in contact with anyone, you can just pick it up, get it going and, and go have fun. Yeah, and I think as well is that, you know like your car clubs and stuff, when you're trying to plan a route it's really difficult. I used to do them for my birthday every year and I used to sit down and I'd route map and I remember there was one particular year and if I can find a photo I'll chuck it over now where there was, I don't know why, what on earth inspired us to do this but there was a road that you couldn't drive down and we said oh well it looks like you can go down it on the map so instead of being normal people that would go oh yeah no don't drive down on that we actually drove down this road and we got stuck and we had to push an allegra up a hill it was absolutely ridiculous whereas on this because all the routes are there it just saves you time i think a lot of especially like car clubs and stuff as well and groups when you want to do a route it is so time heavy to get that route planned and drawn up and checked and all the rest of it it just takes all the faff out of it for you i know that i'm going to do it next year for my birthday i'm just going to get us all one of these routes and we can all just go on and have a laugh and break down somewhere new she also mentioned something as well that she's looking she can personalize the routes so she can tailor them so she can tailor them to your car club or your friend group or so she's quite sort of Quite flexible, really. Yeah, well, I think she, 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 had, she had the example of um, like the Bentley car club, for example. They could do like a route with the Bentleys and then take them as part of the route, take them to the Bentley Museum or a Bentley factory, and then you know incorporate the route yeah. that sort of way. So no, I've I've really quite. enjoyed it. I think it's I'm really enjoying it as well for the fact that we've been able to see some really lovely places. Yeah. So we've. Um, God, where have we stopped today? We stopped at the castle, didn't we? Yeah. That was really nice. And we had our little lunch. Love a little pub. Really oh, sort of yeah, I forgot pub. about the pub. Yeah, we went to the pub and that was, do you know, that was really chilled out because as we're driving along, there's, um, what's the correct term? Is it river? Is it river, canal, yeah, canal, the canal, canal that's the one. On the side, really. Yeah, there's a canal running alongside us and they've got all the canal boats and it's just, I've just enjoyed it so very, very much. It's been just really good fun. Now we're talking about Drive It Day and all the things that you can do for Drive It Day. And so I think it's really important that, whilst it's not necessarily part of this drive today, I want to just talk about what Drive It Day is. And I feel very passionately that investing in the next generation leads to a better future because there's so many studies out there that show that people that end up in substance abuse situations, in situations where they commit crimes and all the rest of it, a lot of it is down to a terrible childhood and it basically sets the scene for a really disjointed adulthood and so I know that all the money that's donated as part of Drive It Day goes to the NSPTC so I've just popped a little link to Drive It Day in the bio below and about NSPCC as well because I think it's really important that whilst Drive It Day is a really great celebration of getting out there in your cars and using them and encouraging other people to do it, I think it's really important to remember the charity at heart as well because children are so important and without decent adult advocates, they, you know, they can become so lost very very quickly now i think we're gonna push on aren't we we're gonna do our eighth quest and then we're gonna head back to the hotel now i've got some real fingers crossed here because um i'm very hopeful that we place in the top three because we've been very observant today haven't we yeah we're doing quite well i think so far 
Right, wish us luck, see you in a bit. Well, we end it today where we began, which is the Crew Hall Hotel. And by the way, this hotel is nuts. It's got more history in it than I would say half the stately homes that I've visited have. And I'm going to show you some of my favourite bits of the hotel, which you can visit as well if you come and stay. It even has a chapel. It's so cool. Now, I know that at the start of the video, I told you that everybody was in a bit of a competition as to see who was going to place first. Now, you might notice... There's no prize in our hands. Well, the reason for that is, is we didn't win, but it's okay, even though we're crazily competitive, because we came third, and for me, that's still a really good placement. And if you're wondering how close the result was between third and first, there was less than 1% in it. I think it was less than 1% or less than 2%. It was like nothing, essentially. Um, so if only we'd managed to nail a few more of those questions and I hadn't been such an eager beaver and said, oh, Fred, press that, press that. But it was all good fun. And we've actually said that we had more fun using the Morris Miner in this way, going on this amazing adventure through the app, doing all the questions, getting to that point and you've got your time questions and you're like, what are you doing? What else are you picking? We said it was far better than some of the other stuff that we've done where we've gone out on little sedate drives and it just added a touch of colour and flavour to the usual getting from A to B. How fun it would be in a modern car, I don't know. Um, but I think you need two things to make this really work. Well, apart from a device to run the app is you need really good company in the car so you need someone with a good set of eyeballs who can be on the ball and you also need your favourite car because I don't think it would be the same if you were doing it in something faceless and boring and the turning circle on the Morris Minor was so good that every time we went wrong or we missed something we were just able to swizzle around so it was brilliant and we still had a really great time so i've popped all the details in the description box below if you want to do it as well remember you can do it with just a few cars you can do it with your car club there's so many different ways to experience it or you can just book it for yourself and go out with you and a friend in the car and just enjoy it just on your own terms. And that's what I loved about it. And it wasn't speedy. It wasn't all about racing to the finish line. It was just about having a laugh. And you know how I feel about having fun in your classic. It's always two thumbs up from me. Now, before I say goodbye to you, we'll have a quick tour of the hotel and I'll give you a little bit of history. Who do I think I am? Miss Hubner. But anyway, see you soon.